Nick Allo, KCThunder.com. Uh, Mark, what do you think uh, your guys were able to get to in the fourth quarter, both defensively and then offensively, that um, was able to change the game so much? Uh, I thought it was the third that really changed the game. I thought um, we went down 15 uh, really from when we went up 10 in the second quarter all the way until the four-minute mark in the third uh, they just controlled the game. They really punched us in the face, give them a lot of credit for the aggressiveness they played with. Um, and it took us a long time to to get a response there. And that group at the end of the third really got us back in the game and just shifted the, the tone of the game a little bit. And then the group down the stretch did a great job. But I didn't think any of our players were particularly great tonight individually. But at the same time, everybody... Uh, had some part in the win, you know, in different stretches of the game. We needed everybody tonight, and everybody answered, you know, from about the third quarter on. Yeah, one of the guys that contributed was Poku. He had seven, seven, and two blocks in the second half alone and seemed to you know, tip in rebounds, sprinting the length of the floor to get in position. Your thoughts on maybe what he was able to give you from an energy standpoint? Yeah, I thought he really helped us offensively, too. You know, I thought he helped us with um, just his, his movement, creating action for us, ball movement. He made some shots. Um, and then, you know, defensively, you know, he was physical as heck. You know, we had Jay Rob on, Bancaro down the stretch. He was on Carter, who gave us problems uh, for the majority of the game until the stretch run. And so uh, he did a good job standing in there as well. Paris Lawson, OKCThunder.com, wanted to ask you about Shea, specific, specifically in that crunch time moment, the fourth quarter. Just what does he give this group in that sort of environment and moment in the game? Uh, great poise, you know, great poise. Um, that's probably the thing that stands out about that stretch. Um, I, you know, I still don't think he's playing his best basketball, uh, for 48 at least. Uh, and I don't think he will either after tonight, but... Um, you know, in the fourth quarter for sure. And it started with our stops, you know, like it was more that than anything. I thought all five of those guys were really scrappy. Trey gave us great stuff down on that end. Poku, him, J-Rob, Dort was pretty good on Bancaro all game. And then we moved him off him late, and he remained good on that end of the floor. Andrew Select of the Athletic. Shave defended Franz Wagner really well in the fourth quarter. Yep. Seemed very prepared for that matchup. Just, just tell me about, like, maybe his defensive preparation for this matchup. Um, I, you'd have to ask him. Is he coming up? Yeah, ask him on the prep. Um, what'd you say? I said I hope. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get out of here as soon as possible no, no, for you. No, no. <laughs> uh, the the thing that I'm more focused on is you know he is evolving as a player as all of our guys are, and you know an evolution for him is is really the care factor on that end of the floor more than anything. Mm -hmm. uh, he's six six. He's smart. He's tough. Um, and if he's like as invested on that end of the floor uh, as he's been up until this point of the season, it's going to take our team to another level, not only because of the contributions in a vacuum, but because uh, when you've got a guy that's as talented as he is, and that's kind of, you know, he's, I wouldn't call him accomplished, but he's definitely kind of ahead of the peer group in some ways in terms of experience and what he's accomplished to this point in his short career. Um, it's a tone setter when a guy like that cares that much on that end of the floor and um it makes it very very hard for other guys to hide on that end uh, and we need that from him and he's done a great job and then giddy didn't close the game you seem to kind of stagger him and shea throughout the game what went into that decision um it was out of halftime uh you know i was i was trying to get more balance in the units i guess um yeah, I just went with that. It's going to be different guys on different nights. I mean, we didn't close door. I mean, we closed a different group almost every night. Um, he's getting back into rhythm. It's his first game back. Uh, and he was a huge catalyst for us in the third. You know, I thought that group in the third, you know, as much as the guys in the fourth, I mean, they, they scored four points, I think, in the last seven minutes. It was, a, it was a great effort there. But the game turned with that group in the third with him and Oos. Um, I think Pope might have been out there. J-Rob was out there. Trey maybe. Um that was the group that got the game turned, and Josh was a huge part of that. And, and then with, when you look at results of like lineups and stuff like that, you've you haven't played many lineups very many minutes at all. You have played lots and lots of different lineups. Like, uh, how do you get to a place where you, you use that kind of data, or what, you know, what do you do with that kind of data? The lineup data is complicated um, for a lot of reasons. It's hard to draw like hard and fast conclusions about that. I would say that. 
the data we look at more is like conceptual, so like combinations of players, um, you know, groups that we know are switching more often than not, groups that we know are in coverage more often than not, but the sample's too low for that right now. And what we're doing right now is trying to create a situation where we're trying to do what's best for the team. Um, we're trying to encourage guys to stay ready at any moment uh, and seeing who's rising to those opportunities. And I'll use Robinson Earl as an example here. I mean, it's not easy from a rhythm standpoint when you don't know exactly when you're going to play. Um, but when you fight through that um, kind of mental hurdle, you actually become more resolved and you become tougher. And J-Rob's a guy the last two games hasn't played a ton of minutes, has been um, it, pl playing unpredictable rotations, I uh, didn't start him out of halftime, and then tonight, I mean, he was a huge catalyst in that game. He was huge defensively. Him guarding Bancaro allowed us to kind of slot down. We kind of matched their size late, which we were going away from early. It wasn't working for us, and, you know, without him tonight, we don't get that game. And so um, that's just one anecdote as it relates to the lineups. Uh, and then once we've got kind of a body of work, we can take a step back and look at it um, once it's a little bit more, it has more integrity in terms of a sample. Joe Masato, the Oklahoman. Um, Mark, you, you mentioned that there's stuff that Shea could do even better. We we can all see the the great things he's doing out there, but what are some of those things that you're looking for out of him to even improve upon? The defense sustaining that. You know, it's only been seven games, and we've got you know seventy something more. Um, and then on the offensive end, it's a lot of it's like pace related, um, fast up the floor, fast in the actions. Like when we send somebody to the ball with him, the play. Um, against Bowl late, you know, we call the matchup up. Robin Snurl sets a screen for him, and he hits the gas, and he has them, you know, reacting to him, and he kicks out for Lou, and Lou hit the three in the left corner. Um, that's exactly the kind of gas that we want him to play with. Um, he also can break his guy down, which is helpful at times, too, and he did that a lot tonight. I thought he kept us afloat with that, but um, if we're thinking long term, you know, our ability to be a team that plays with pace up the floor inside of actions is going to be critical and it's going to maximize the rest of the guys. And that's kind of one of the things that we're we're trying to encourage him to do. The Magic had a pretty significant size advantage. They played it's like three, seven, four, seven footers almost out there. Um what? How, how do you think you handled their length? Not good early um, in the in the second quarter and third. Obviously, we were trying to go small. Um, we believe in in the toughness and physical um, ability, you know, capability of the group. Um, and it's a challenge when you play against the team that's big like that, and you go small and you lean into that, um, and you're you're not, you know. It something's got to give, you know, and we want to be a team that makes the other team give. And the Detroit preseason game was a great example of this. You know, we started small in that game. They kind of punched us in the mouth. And then the third quarter of that game, um, you know, we were we were really tough. And uh, if we can play with that toughness small and then teams have to guard us on the other end, um, that could be an advantage for us. And it was down the stretch. You know, we were still kind of smaller than them down the stretch. Um, but certainly left a lot to be desired. There's a lot we can learn from from the, the first parts of that game. And uh, J-Dub got his first start tonight. What did you see from him? It's only his third game, you know, and so a lot of it's just like getting a baseline, um, evaluating kind of where he's at. He's obviously a really good player. Um, I thought when we ha we were kind of lifeless defensively in the third quarter, and he was on Wagner, and he was trying to get it going. You know, he had that foul that was kind of a late shot clock. They, you know, it was probably a foul, but he got bailed out. That was unbelievable pressure on that play, and um, I was impressed by that because it was kind of nothing was really going right. The ball wasn't rolling down the hill, and yet he was trying to drum up something with his intensity and toughness, and you know that showed something. So we're just going to keep learning. Jerry Ramsey with the franchise. Uh, Isaiah Joe checked in at the end of the first quarter, gave you 11 guys that you rotated in the first quarter. Yep. Were you just trying to grab like a, a lineup you liked? Were you just trying to look to see what you could do uh, in that moment? Or just it was 11 guys really like on your radar of putting in in the first quarter? Uh, he was on my radar. You know, I was definitely going to try to get him out there at night. Um, yeah, I mean, the way I look at it, it's less about how many we play. It's more everybody has their own identity and individual strengths. And we're trying to encourage them to play to those strengths and work on those strengths. And then when those strengths are relevant, um, we're going to deploy them. And, you know, they've got to be ready to go in. Robinson Earl tonight is the best example of that. You know, and Isaiah the other night, um, you know, when your number gets called, go in there and be who you are. Because, you know, if we're calling your number, it's because we think we need that right now. And so 
we're just we're training it. You know, it's it's up and down. It's not going to be perfect. There's like I said, there's trade offs to every approach. If you play eight guys, there's good, there's positives to that, and there's negatives. And if you play eleven or twelve or thirteen or different guys every night, there's positive and negative to that. We're just doing what we think's best right now. Daniel Bell, <clears throat> Daniel Bell, BSO. I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything. I won't but, take it that way. Um, <laughs> Especially coming from you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure if you can coach poise, but I'm not an NBA coach either, so I wouldn't know. But um, the last four games, you guys have shown a lot of great poise. I mean, the youngest team in the NBA is that – what do you credit that to? Because there are a lot of times where you guys could have folded and gave up the lead or not come back from down 15. Uh, and it's not just the older guys. Like, it's Isaiah Joe also yeah. doesn't have that much experience. So what would you give credit to that? Well, first of all, can you tell me what's disrespectful? <laughs> I'm well, not. I, I was. I was really bracing for that. <laughs> I was like, anything could happen here. It sounded disrespectful. And I gave head. you permission. I was like, hey, <laughs> blank check. Uh, I think um, some of it, I think, comes from the guys. Like, I think you can't take away. It starts there always. You know, whatever's going on out there, it starts with them. And I think for young players, we've got guys with really good heads on their shoulders and. Um, uh, that goes a long way with what you're talking about, and I think it's contagious, and I think that's definitely part of the locker room, independent of anything else. And then I also think that organizationally we try to create a very consistent process-oriented environment that allows you to stay locked in on the moment and locked in on what um, what we need right now, whether it's in a practice, recovery day, game. And I think that you know contributes on the margins, but the majority of the credit on that deserves, you know, goes to the players. Derek Parker, inside the Thunder, first official game versus Bancaro. Um, what makes him so tough to guard, and, and what did you see out of him tonight specifically? He's a really good player, uh, great physical profile, and great craft. You know, he's very crafty for a young player. He's got kind of an old soul game. Um, he draws fouls. He's a good passer. He plays the game the right way. Um, you know, when he learns the pictures, you know, he's going to be even better. Um but I mean, the, the combination of kind of the size and skill is is what makes them unique. And they, I was impressed with them. I mean, they came in here and they were they were at us, you know, for the majority of the game. They outplayed us the majority of the game. Um, we were fortunate to win. I was really, you know, impressed with how we closed and you know the latter part of the game. But yeah, that's a good team that's got a bright future, obviously. Thank you, coach. Yep. See you.